Hello, this is Anna Gochi here, and welcome to another reaction video. And today we'll be reacting to Kenshin Breakdown. Yeah, I know it's kind of redundant that I'm reacting to something that I'm in. So, yeah, why not? Plus, I did a reaction to like the previous Kenshin Breakdowns, and right now I'm reacting to that. One of my biggest videos that I, one of my longest videos I did on my channel, not including the Spider Man stream, but <laughs> this one won't be as long, but yeah. Also, heads up, um, if you, a couple of the next country breakdowns might be end up being two parters, just for a heads up. Maybe not the timeline will end up being a two parter, it probably won't be end up being a two parter. But we will. The timeline won't end up being a two parter. It'll probably just end up being one. But future breakdowns will probably be end up being two parters. So with that, with that said, let's watch the video. Man, I've been waiting all day just to watch this. <laughs> okay. Now that I finally got some free time on me. I guess it is about time I finally got back to work on that Kenshin Chaos Breakdown episode. It has been a while since we last worked on, but who could that be? Wow, wow, wow. Hello there. Oh, hey there, Akno. Wait, what are you doing here, Whistle Lord? Oh, you know exactly why I'm here. You forgot to mention something in the last video. And that was... Well, you forgot to mention one thing. You remember in your last Kenshin Breakdown, you said there was someone in a community meeting who said, what if there was a Kujira profile? Well, you forgot to mention that person. That person was none other than moi, me, at Noguchi. Plus, do you really think you can have a Kenshin Breakdown without me? That I practically saved Kenshin Chaos. Do you really think you can have it without me? Okay, well, sorry that ran on your parade, man, but I barely even knew you at the time, and I didn't exactly know it was you. I just know somebody asked that question at one point, so sorry about that. And two, the whole thing about Kenshin Studios being saved was more of a group effort. It wasn't just solely one guy saving the other, but uh, okay. Plus, it's been a minute since you last Kenshin Bait Down, so I thought... I might as well kind of help out a little bit. Well, I mean, you're welcome to join in if you want. There's always room for more people to join in on this series, but it would have been nice if you just, I don't know, told me before you started barging into my house today. So you want to join in then? Hell yeah. Okay, with that said, I always wanted to do this. <laughs> Hello, I'm Anagoji. That's Neos. I'm a fan Godzilla leader. Hello there. It's time. To start another Kenshin Breakdown. Let the breakdown continue! Low intro. Niels. Greetings, true believers. I am your host, Neos Gamer, and welcome back to a brand new entry in the Kenshin Chaos Breakdown series. And Man, I, say, <laughs> I love that intro. Also, let me pause the video real quick. I actually came up with that skit. I because I noticed it didn't put a skit in the beginning of the video. I was like, you know what? Let me fix that real quick. And I wanted them to do like a skit for that video because most of the videos end up having skits. Like, I really wanted a skit, so yeah, gave them a skit, <laughs> gave them my idea. It, the first one was very long, it was really long, but we shortened it down. And uh, Neil's lines that he actually gave him weren't actually the ones I gave him the script, but eh, I'm okay with that. They were kind of hard to read, so <laughs> yeah, my type is not that good, but eh, they were good. <sighs> I did like the skit. It was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. Also, yeah, that was kind of true that the Kurujiwa 
profile was requested by me. Yeah. I did want a Kujia profile that was basically me like in a community meeting like way, way long ago. Alright. With that said, let's continue. Yeah. Also, yeah, I faced and I did donate the like the last amount to the kids order, so yeah, I did practically save Kendra Studios. I even got the message of what Nico said <laughs> when I save when I uh donated the last amount. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, that was the best day. That was a grand day. I still remember that. That was easy by not by day. <laughs> that was the best day ever. Anyway, if that's ever, let's just continue. Actually, uh, how long has it been since I've last been in here with you guys? Nearly a year? Are you serious? I did not realize it was that long. Sorry about that. Well, anyway, to make up for that, we have a brand new batch of episodes to cover here. That being episodes five through seven of Kenshin Chaos. Now, of course, I won't be doing this alone because, after all, we oh, so this next spot. Host Godzilla Reader here, as well as our newest guest, Akno Goji. Hello, everybody. I'm the Godzilla Reader, and yes, yes, finally, freaking finally, after ten months. Since the last video, we're finally back, and we're continuing the Kenshin Chaos Breakdown. Oh, and let me tell you, let me just tell you. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a lot to cover, and when I mean a lot, I certainly mean a lot. There is so much that has happened with Kurajira and his series, and we're ready for it. We are very much prepared for this. Okay, so before we get started with the analysis, how about we let our guests, who have basically joined us for this series, introduce themselves? Well, technically speaking himself, since originally we wanted Spyro to join us for this video, but he had to cut up with other stuff, which is alright. So yeah, we got a new guest who was definitely excited to join us. So Agno Goji, yeah, <laughs> I have really enjoyed doing that Kenshin breakdown. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun. The scripts took forever though. With the jet, it's like thirty-two pages long. That's how long the freaking script is. Jesus freaking Christ, it was that long. It was legit that long of a script. Yeah. It was pretty long. A pretty long ass script. One of the longest scripts I have to do. Even told my mom of how long. It got so bad of writing that script that I started seeing Kujira all over the like everywhere. <laughs> that's how bad that's how long the script was. Of writing for so long. I legit got three days of no sleep. <laughs> Just writing the script. Yeah. I legit vote. I legit tried to write that script. So. Anyway. Let's, let's play. Introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Adam Goji, and my background with Kenshin Studios goes way back to 2016, when I first saw Water Pump. So you might be asking, wait, 2016? It came out in 2013. Well, if I didn't have a YouTube account at the time in 2013, I didn't create mine until June 29th, 2016. And it wasn't called Adam Goji, I was called Superfan X. I didn't create the Adam Goji YouTube account till April 29th, 2019. Anyway, I got introduced to like everybody to Goji Fan 1993. Now thinking about it, I think I was there the very beginning of the Kitchen Studios YouTube channel due to Super Fan Etzcal and then followed them on the Agna Goji account. I love all the stuff that Kitchen Studios have been doing at the community meetings, yeah, Kitchen definitely. Cast, Kitchen Air Trilogy, and of course, Kenji Chaos. I was the biggest supporter of Kenji Chaos Kickstarter. Also, even created 
the fan design of Kujia fighting my Kanthe Lijin. We made a video and a chapter on it. If you're interested, to check me out. Go follow me on Instagram at Nagoji200. Oh, so gotta make. At Nagoji Official on Twitter, on Facebook at Nagoji. And you can find me on YouTube at Nagoji2001. And also, I have a Wattpad called Nagoji. If you're interested. Yeah, that's not me. That's a poser. I am a fat side guy to pose on Wattpad, but Anagoji, the opposing M is me. Yeah, that's not me. That's not me. You should know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you, know, you may want to make a little bit of editing on that. That's not me. Isn't the usual Kinchin Chaos uh, intro that we've seen only have like one WAP <laughs> Yeah, it's the J Code. But instead, yeah, that's not. Me. A small I don't know who part to me. of the anyway. original intro of the very first Ultraman, which is an interesting detail. And obviously, of course, this would be added since this is the episode where Ultraman appears. So, yeah. Anyways, we begin the episodes with uh, a city. And everything seems to be quite peaceful, normal, and nothing bad is happening. At the same time, the camera is also focused on one man who is walking normally. Until he stops and looks at the sky, almost like he notices something weird. Coming out of nowhere, the portal opens up. And everyone, basically being scared, ends up running away from their lives. But the man does not run. In fact, he stares at the portal and then takes out a strange device. Although, of course, if you're an Ultraman fan, wow. you know exactly what this is. Because upon pressing the device, this man ends up becoming the giant of light, Ultraman. And at the same time, Kurajira walks out of the portal and we also oh, speaking of Kujira, I'm making a custom Kujira right and now. I wait for the finger mold. He looks harder. Right, I guess. I mean, looking at it, it looks like he has a huge hole in his chest, which is a bit weird. Although, of course, it's not the, it's not that horrible. I think he looks alright for the most part. Anyways, upon arriving to this new world, Kujira looks around at his surroundings. Although that didn't quite last long because he then ends up getting kicked in the face by Ultraman, sending him crashing on a building. This is where the battle begins. After getting up and roaring at Ultraman, he charges towards the Giant of Light and attempts to attack him. Although Ultraman blocks him and then proceeds to... Uh, wait, what? <laughs> Uh, okay, that was a bit weird, but never mind that. L let's forget that, okay? Anyways, after getting punched and kicked by Ultraman, Kurajira then proceeds to fire his electricity at him, although that didn't quite do much. For wow. Him, who walks towards him. <laughs> I and love God's Avias in action. I'm confused and then. Oh. What? Also, yes, I did come up with that skit. <laughs> I came up with a few of these skits in the video. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Couldn't not help myself. <laughs> uh, 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 you, you, you know what? You, you know what? I, I think I came up with all those lines. Something ones. real quick. I legit. Uh, hey, Agno, um, wanna do this one? Um, yeah, sure. Great. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't uh, quit his lines. Talk to me I quit. So can go and make sure. Is okay. <laughs> I. But this part right <laughs> here okay. was all me. Was all me. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I need to take the process of what I just seen. <laughs> Those lines I did. What was that? What in the flying kaiju was that? 
<laughs> yeah. That, that I, legit all I said was to make some money. Huh? Who's calling me right now? That part did right. Yellow. Hey, uh, reader, is everything going okay? Oh, hey, Neos. Um, what's up? Michael told me you just walked out of the studio all of a sudden. Is everything alright? What's going on, man? Oh, right. Yeah, sorry about that. I just had to process what I just saw, which is like so unexpected. Oh, oh, oh. But don't worry, I'm fine, I'm fine. I think I may need to take a little bit of time before returning. But don't worry, I'll be alright. Okay, well then, uh. Just. Take some time off to relax. I'll give you some time to relax, okay? Call me back whenever you feel like you're ready to come back to the studio, and we'll work things out for the next one, all right? All right. I'll see you in a moment, I guess. Take care, man. All right. Peace out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's what I guess. <laughs> Oh my god, I created all of that. What have I done? <laughs> oh god. Okay, folks. Looks like Godzilla Viva will come back once he's come back. Let's go. After Kujo gets cut in half, and you see an explosion as his cut body lands on, I believe, a building, and we see the smoke. Which usually means he's about to regenerate or kill monsters. Like in episode 1 and 2. Which I wish they bring back, but... We didn't see what it looks like. And if you notice, inside the smoke, apparently there's electricity inside the smoke which pulls body parts back. If they're near each other or regenerate. Then we see Kuja rise up from the smoke. He moves his head like he's shaking it off. It's like... Okay, let me try again. <laughs> Before he gets up, Ultraman tackles Kujia to the ground. As he tackles Kujia, we see that Ultraman raises his right arm and uses the Ultra Strats like a chainsaw and makes Kujia bleed for the third time in the episode. We then see Kujia's eyes like wow. And I believe. Yeah, this is clever. It took so many tries to survive this. Tries. <laughs> oh my As god. That he takes Ultraman off his body. And if you look up in the sky, I noticed that you can it see took me from like previous of that true sleep hole. So this might be an advanced version of Ultraman then notices that his color timer is about to run out. So he sends an SLS signal signaling other ultras to live to help defeat Kujia. Ultraman then fires his specimen beam at Kujia. We see it's Louie doing nothing. The Specium Beam has no effect on Kujia. Jesus. It hasn't even put a dent on this guy. Jesus. As Kujia just sees him walk even closer and closer to Ultraman. And then Ultraman just continues firing his Specium Beam thinking that it might work. In just one final step. Specium Beam stops as Ultraman jumps back. While that's happening, Kujia gets bigger and then he shrinks to his normal size and fires a Zenton move similar to how Zenton defeated the Ultraman from the original Ultraman show. I would expect this episode to end it on Kujia just ripping out Ultraman's color timer is actually what I said in my original reaction on Twitter and that was the original plan but Due to Ultimo saying it wasn't faithful to the character. So he went with this, saying that it was more faithful to Ultraman than what the original ending was. But I guess it's a fake KO. Now that Kuja has defeated Ultraman, he's about to destroy the body with his electricity. But when he roars, He's being hit by... Oh, so did you guys get it? Adnologia, Adnogoji, and...
Eh. Who are about to attack him, indicating he's about to get ready for the attack. Then the portal appears behind him. He takes oh, so I might do for the next Kenshin bait down. Then trips that we do. His greatest and bait and his arch rival. Arch rock. When Gaimon is. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Kujo's one weakness. And then our episode ends. Whew, that was hot. Hopefully you guys over here can call me out with the next episode. Okay. I'm back now. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, we're moving to episode six? Okay then. I will help you with that, Agno. Um, so, um, is there anything that I missed from episode 5? Not much, just Kujia doing no damage to Ultraman the whole episode, and then Kujia beats Ultraman by absorbing his specimen way and doing a Zetan move on him. And Kujia is about to destroy his body, and then the Ultraman hit him with... Yeah, now realizing that I wish <laughs> Adelogia does have like a um, lot of mean expression. Maybe for future videos, um, use the dragon of form of Adelogia and not the actual human. Oh. Just for future oh, wow. reference. Um, yeah, he has a dragon um, form. You, you know said that. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. I think I need to check on something real quick. What happened? Kurajira's eyes still went big for no reason whatsoever. And when he got hit by Ultraman's Spacium Beam, he suddenly turns into a balloon. And then when the when the older Ultras appeared to fight him, and then that and when the portal appeared behind him, he trips on a truck. Falls on the portal. What? What? I. I. Uh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, but it looks like Godzilla Vita is busy. Uh, quiet in the corner over there, but but okay. Anyway, I guess I'll do episode six. Episode six starts off with Kuja falling from the sky into the water. Then, before you see him surface from the water, I believe you see like a black smoke hinting at this that he's having problem with electricity powers. Gamma then appears and then lands in front of Kuja. They both have a standoff and they both roar each other for the fight start. And I love this touch, and it just shows you what I'm going to bring up later on. Why I love this version. <coughs> Gamma fires two plasma fireballs, and does nothing to Kujira with him just threatening the attack. Gamma takes it to the sky and then tries to ram Kujira. But before he rams Kujira, Kujira tries to use his electricity, tries to switch to the act gamma, but for some reason doesn't work. Kujira then uses electricity, like, okay, if I can't use it to shoot at you, then I'll just use it to fly. He flies towards gamma, and they both fall into the water. Kujira heads towards gamma, and gamma tries to punch gamma, but. Oh my god, does that gamma what it really just, sound like? Oh, God. He does a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle move of just in his head into a shell. And then Kujira then swims away with 
Gemma falling way behind him. Gemma bumps into Kujia. Kujia tries to hit him again. Misses, and then Gamma bites down on his right arm. Then Gamma fires a plasma fireball on his right arm. You see a huge explosion underwater. When Kujia surfaces, we see that. Oh, wait, Jesus. Kujia just lost his right arm. Uh, Kujia just tries to run away because you can tell he's scared for his life. It's like, oh shit, I just lost my arm. <laughs> but then Gamma pulls him back into the water. And just when you think Gamma's about to finish Kujia, Kujia just returns a favor and slams him into Malden, and then Gamma falls on the surface. Kujia then pulls a new ability straight out of nowhere. Wanna know why? Because he's Kujia, goddammit. <laughs> Brand new ability, which is telekinesis. Moves the rubble and buries Gamma. And then he uses one of the pieces from the rubble, like a spear, and impales Gamma. Oh my god. Kujia surfaces. You then see Gamma also come out of the water. Then Kujia turns around, sees Gamma. All right, let's get this done over with. But Gamma pulls out the spear, and then we see that Kuja has generated his arm. Gamma just roars in pain for what we thought. Kuja looks up in the sky and then sees Gamma's about to fire his ultimate plasma beam, fires it at Kuja. Kuja just dodges it and proceeds to finish Gamma by shooting his eyes lasers into his sets, and we see Gamma explode. Holy shit. And Kuja looks at the fire and roars in victory. But then the portal appears right behind him. Kuja turns around and sees it and walks through the portal. Oh, that's so that's Well, not quite. We do get, like, an after bed scene. Sadly, it's not... Nick Fury recruiting Kujua into the evil Avengers and if the for the Legion of Doom. Nope, it's you do see like a dead gamma. And then you see an egg. Oh, so the Dark and Avengers is a Wow. Wow. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna have to start a call of people talking about how epic this episode is. Akno, I swear, if you start making a cult inside of this studio, I am shutting down this entire operation. <laughs> do not do that, please. Okay, I'm back now. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just needed to get a lot out of my mind. So, yeah. Oh? We're doing episode 7? Okay, cool. Let's do it. So, we begin this episode in the Olo Earth, where we see some of the residents of that land. Those being the Lizard, which everyone seems to minute, give like the nickname Doug, and those crabs, who seem to be minding their business until they I saw the portal why. and they ended up running away. Kurajira falls out of the portal and was about to land on the ground, but with the power of gravity, he ends up falling up and lands upward, or more like crashes. Soon enough, this loud sound was enough to get the attention of the king of all earth himself, Kong, who reaches for his axe and goes to... Oh my god, oh, this is going to make me rage. At the same time, Kurajira stands oh, up this is gonna make me rage. He goes... weird world, especially with the gravity stuff, once he notices a rock floating and he flicks it. It didn't take Kong long enough to arrive at the scene and meet Kurajira. And most likely seeing him as a threat, Kong gets ready for battle as he hits his chest and roars at him. He then proceeds to jump and gets ready to stab him with his axe. Now pause here. You would think that Kurajira would be smart enough to actually do something, right? Right? <laughs> oh god. Oh god. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Oh, God. What? 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 <laughs> hold the phone. Hold the hold phone for a moment. <laughs> what happened before Krejab decided to do that? You're, you're serious. You're, you're actually serious. Oh, God. Kurajira, for whatever reason, decided that he would try to do Ultraman's Spesium Beam and didn't think that it wouldn't work on him because he doesn't have that type of power. Like, what? What? Like, the... Oh, well, uh, uh, you, you know what? You, you know what? No, no, no. You know what? I, I think I'm gonna go somewhere else. I think I need some fresh air to get this out of my mind. So, Neos, if you do not mind, perhaps you should go on. Go, go on with me. Just, just do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I also made that. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, Reader isn't normally like this. He's going through a bit of a, um, <laughs> a rough patch today. Um, wh why don't we carry on with this? We we we'll, we'll take a look back at that later, okay? Wh why don't we just carry on, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, as he was saying... Pajira's attempt at replicating Ultraman's Spatium Beam would have proven to be futile, which would have also resulted in him losing his arm. Kong would have prepared to finish off Kudajira with a final blow from his axe, only for Kudajira to retaliate by firing a laser at Kong and then regenerating his arm afterwards, before preparing to fire off an electric beam towards the giant gorilla. However... Something really unexpected happened. Oh, now, no, this... This doesn't kill Kong. In fact, he absorbs the energy. And then this madness happens. You better say he's going Super Saiyan, because that is basically Super Saiyan. Like, like what? Since when the heck has Kong been able to turn into a freaking Super Saiyan? I mean, yes, don't finally me wrong, someone can lie. That's freaking cool, but since when was Kong able to pull out tricks like this? If he was able to do this the entire time, then maybe he would have had a better chance against Godzilla and Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. yeah. But that is besides my point. Finally, anyway, someone on. agrees. As the episode That's continues, stupid. Why is he turning Super Saiyan? Why in the living hell does he turn Super Saiyan? Yeah. being the fearless kaiju that he is, decided to jump towards it, having no fear of what's about to happen and no fear of Kong, only for when the light disappears, Kong grabs him by his neck and gives him one of the coldest... And most sinister looking glares I have ever seen. Worthless. Don't show your pathetic face around me ever again. <laughs> In my wrist, I got time today. Fuck it, I'm crossing the line today. Oh god, Godzilla would be proud right now. Blood was not cooking for Kuda Jira that day. <laughs> <laughs> After serving up a brutal beatdown to the ultimate life form, Kong decided to return to in order for him to deliver the killing blow to Kudajira. At this point, this was giving time for Kudajira in order to figure out what exactly he could do in order to beat Kong. And afterwards, he decided to pick up a palm tree to make the fight a bit oh, more listen. Okay. Future reference, you better have me do the final wars. I swear to God, if you do not have me do the final wars episode, I will find you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm doing the final wars episode. Like, come on, that's my favorite Godzilla. I have to do that. he would have kept Kong down on the ground and then made him choke on the same palm tree that he was using as a weapon. 
ultimately bringing an end to the king of Skull Island. As Kudajiro looks down at Kong's now lifeless body, reveling in his victory, suddenly a portal would have appeared right above him. And what was inside of this portal revealed his next opponent. But not just any opponent. This was the king of all monsters himself, Godzilla. Enraged by the very sight of the Monster King, Kudajira then flew right inside of the portal in order to face his former enemy, marking an end to Episode 7 of Kenshin Chaos. Okay, now we need to talk about this. We seriously need to talk about this issue. Will Kudajira be able to regain his former glory against Ultraman? Find out in the next episode of Kenshin Chaos Breakdown. Same Kuda time, same Kuda channel? Don't worry, it's in progress. If all the vocal lines are done, it'll probably be out tomorrow. It'll probably be out tomorrow. I'm actually waiting for it. Wait, did Lady Diana just upload something? Sorry, I thought it was recording, but I got distracted with something. Uh, let me just pause this real quick. I got distracted with something. Uh, my bad. I got distracted with a different YouTube video, YouTube channel. But yep, enjoy that. Enjoy that so much. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Also, I think um, God's leader did kind of react. He really. I'm not sure if all of that was fake or not, but I think he really hated these episodes. It's not uh, the saturation. <laughs> he really hated those episodes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of these episodes. Hopefully for the finale, he likes them a little bit more. I think the finale is a little bit better. Mostly to do with Baggin and I mean, not Super Godzilla, but Final Goji, yeah. I think the final, the three part of the Super Godzilla saga is probably better. Yeah. With that said, this is Goji sign off. And remember, <gasps> stay big, um, Godzilla fans. No, not Godzilla fans. Stay big, Kenshin fans. <laughs>